Good morning, John and Blair. Thank you. With recent layoffs announced at major tech companies, you might be thinking, what if this happens to me? Yeah, we're going to be joined by a guest who says you have more rights than you realize when it comes to being laid off. We'll break it down for you. Actually, John, you're, you're doing that interview for us this morning. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Amelia. With recent layoffs announced at major tech companies, you might be thinking, what if this happens to me? We'll be joined by a guest who says you have more rights than you realize when it comes to being laid off. Recent layoffs from major corporations in the tech industry, well, they're impacting people's lives. You might have more rights than you realize. In fact, you might have room for negotiation. Joining us this morning is employment law attorney Alan Crone, who's also the author of The Law at Work. He has some tips to help people better negotiate a severance. Good morning, Alan. How Good you morning. I appreciate being here. We are glad to have you here with us this morning because this is something that's impacting a lot of people throughout the last year, especially right now. What types of, of questions, rather, should employees ask during a layoff meeting? Well, they should first ask why they're being fired yeah. and get, uh, get that on the record. Mm -hmm. I'll say there are three things that you should think about when you're going into a meeting like that, whether it's a, a layoff, a reduction in force, or mm -hmm. maybe you're getting fired for, for whatever reason. The first thing is talk less, listen more, to quote a great uh, uh, Broadway play. Less is more. Less is more. Ask questions. Mm -hmm. You know, why am I being fired? What are you offering me? That sort of thing. But don't get into an argument with the person who's firing you. Mm -hmm. That decision's been made. There's nothing you can do about it right then. Take a pad. Try to take down as many notes as possible. Okay. Uh, the, the second thing is um, uh, don't sign anything at that meeting. Now, you may get pressured mm -hmm. to sign something, but don't do it. Say, look, I want to take this and have my lawyer look at it, or I want to take this and think about it. If you're over 40, they have to give you 21 days to consider it and then seven days to revoke it even after you sign it. So you're not insulting anybody, take it with it. And the third thing is go see a lawyer. Have a lawyer look at it. It may, not, it may or may not be negotiable. Everyone is different. Mm -hmm. But the lawyer can tell you what you're signing and what you're giving up and what it all means. There may be a non-compete provision in there or some other restriction on you that you may not understand because of the way it's written. So at least pay a lawyer to, to read it to explain it to you, and then to see if you might have uh, some negotiating room. And when he speaks that word negotiation, some room, how can a, a lawyer help negotiate a severance package? Well, again, it depends on the particular severance package. Mm -hmm. But uh, if, if you're being fired, particularly on a one-off situation, um, you may be being fired unfairly or wrongfully. They may not be doing everything they're supposed to be doing. They're, you may have other claims against the employer mm -hmm. that you're giving up in this. Uh, maybe they owe you for expenses, uh, reimbursements, mileage, whatever that may be. Um, you want to make sure you get your last paycheck. So a lawyer can make sure that you're getting everything that you're entitled to. And if you might have a claim against your employer, that, that lawyer can help you negotiate the severance payment up to, to compensate you for that. You are a lawyer, you are an author. Now, how can your book, The Law at Work, help employers and employees in this situation? Better understand severance agreements, that is. Right. Well, what I, what I did in the book is I tried to take complex legal uh, situations and write them for the non-lawyer. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if I'd written this for lawyers, it would be 20 times as large because, you, you know, you got to put a lot of words in it. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted people to be able to read it to understand what the law is, how it might affect them, mm -hmm. and then that helps them make better decisions going forward. And it works for executives and employees. It also works for entrepreneurs and employers mm -hmm. um, understand what the law is and, and apply it. Employment law is very, very complicated. Uh, you know, if I were a plumber, I'd say call a plumber. Mm -hmm. If you have a leak, uh, you need to call a lawyer because there's no more important relationship that you have other than maybe with your spouse or significant other, uh, that's, you know, the, your romantic relationship, uh, then your relationship with your employer. Mm -hmm. it's, it's existential because it literally puts food on your table, so you need to make sure you understand your rights. Where can we find this book, Alan? You can find the book on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Just uh, go to Amazon, type in my name, and it'll come right up. All right, sounds good. Alan, thank you for joining us. Great my information. My pleasure. Thank All you. Right. We have this full interview on our website, foxynow.com. Let's get over to Amelia for a look at your roadways.